All right, here we are. Uh, let's take a look at example 9.1. So in example 9.1, uh, we are trying to model the downward velocity uh, of a projectile. Um, and so here's our uh, original force balance, uh, which we'll then set up to get our governing uh, differential equation. And so the one comment I'll make about this is here's our uh, force balance that we start with. Okay, And what I would ultimately like to solve for is um, or what we're trying to get is um, the velocity as a function of time, right? So we want to get an expression or we want to calculate uh, V as a function of T. And so in order to calculate that numerically, what we need is to know how V changes with respect to T. What's the rate of change of V with respect to T? Okay, and so that's given by this exact quantity, uh, dV dT, the first derivative of velocity with respect to time. So um, where I'm trying to get at is, you know, this equation is fine, uh, but what we need to be able to create is a rate function, a function that gives us how V changes with respect to T. So we need to get dV dT over here on the left-hand side all by itself, right? And so we do that by uh, dividing through by M to get our final expression here, okay? So dV dT is G minus K times V, where G is our gravitational constant. We're given the value down here. K is uh, gamma over M, friction constant over mass, and we're told to use a value of 0.5. Okay, so um, here is our rate expression, right? The first order differential equation. That's yeah, a rate expression for uh, V with respect to T. And then at uh, the first order differential equation, right? So you integrated diffy Q once, right? You get a constant of integration. Uh, so you need uh, the value of our function at some time to pin down that constant. When we solve using ODE45, we need to know uh, the value at time equals zero, okay? So if you're solving analytically, you could have as a reference point a value of your function at any time, but solving numerically, we need the value at time equals zero, um, but that's okay because that's typically the most common scenario that you'll ever encounter, okay? Um, so we ha have an initial condition, and then we're also told that this is a case you can solve analytically, and this is what the anal or analytic solution looks like that we could compare to um, after we solve. Okay, um, so I've jotted down the equation initial condition and parameters uh, for my reference. I'm going to jump over to MATLAB and I won't have this up because this is rather large. Um, we'll solve and uh, go from there. Okay, so I said when we solve numerically, okay, so we want to uh, solve for v as a function of t. So in order to do that, what we need to know is how V changes with respect to T, right? We need a rate function. We need to know how V changes with respect to T, dV dT. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a function, okay? A uh, function for my rate function, okay? So I'll start with my signature, a okay, function, res is equal to free fall rate, and it's going to have two inputs, uh, T and V. When I create a rate file, okay, no matter what the differential equation is, there are two constraints required for use with ODE45. The first is that your function can only have a single output variable. Second restriction is your function can only have two input variables, where the first is going to be t, and then the second argument is going to be the value of your function or functions at that t. Okay, and in this chapter we just have a single variable. Um, so this would just be that, um, you know, velocity at, at that time t. Okay? All right, so um, if you have parameters, they either need to be defined here within the function file, um, or you could add those as input variables, but then you need to create an anonymous function in your command window where you pass them. And we could take a look at that after we solve uh, the problem. Okay, so um, if I add my constants first, uh, so G is 9.81 okay, meters per second squared, and K is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, I won't worry too much about comments and you know for this demonstration, but um, you could add additional comments. And then next, we need to compute our rate. Okay, so res, what we want to return back is the rate of change of V with respect to T. Okay, and that is equal to uh, G minus K times V. Okay. And so if you ever you know need a reminder of how this works, think back to Euler. 
Okay, so what's going to happen is as an initial condition, we know the value of v at time equals zero. So what MATLAB will do is it'll call this rate function with that known value of time, t equals zero, and known value of your velocity, v equals v naught. Then for those two values, it can go ahead and it can compute dv dt at time equals zero. Then knowing that initial condition and that rate of change, you can use that to propagate yourself forward in time to get a new estimate of v at a given t, and then you repeat. Okay. Um, so let me save it. Okay, so we can call it free fall rate. And then let's go over to command window and talk about solving. Okay, so if I were just to call ODE45, so the basic call would be ODE45. Okay, then I need to give it the function handle uh, for my rate function. Okay, which in this case is free fall rate. Okay, next I need to tell it what time range to integrate over. So let's just say we wanted to go from 0 to 40 seconds. Okay, so my second argument is a vector. It gives me my initial time to my final time. And then the third argument would be uh, your initial condition, your initial value of v, uh, which we're told is 0. Okay, and so if I just run it, the result's going to be a plot. Okay, and actually let me uh, try and shrink this up so that as we play with it, we can see um, our plot at all times. Okay, so the result is just uh, a plot. Okay, cool. So the circles are the points at which it evaluated my function, and then it connects them uh, by line. And so this y-axis would be velocity, um, x-axis would be uh, time. Okay, and if you want, you could, you know, add labels to this. So if I wanted say an x label of time in seconds. Right, I could do that. Okay. All right. But I'm going to close this. Okay. So that's great, but I only get a plot. Right. You'll see nothing's even assigned to answer. Right. Or default variable that MATLAB, MATLAB assigns uh, results to. So, ODE45, similar to FSolve, is one of MATLAB's built-in functions. Um, that can return multiple optional output variables. Okay, okay so I'm going to add a semicolon there to suppress the output. And to get those multiple optional output variables, right, we use bracket notation for a variable assignment. And I'm going to create a vector t and v. Okay. So what will happen here is when MATLAB solves, rather than plot, it'll take all the times at which my function was evaluated and store that in a column vector t and take the values of my function, in this case velocity, at those corresponding times and store those in a column vector here, v. Okay, so if I press return, it um, solves. Um, and I see I have a variable t and v, right? And even there, it tells me that, you know, they're both 81 by 1 doubles. So it's a column vector with 81 rows uh, and uh, one column, right? If I were to just type t, right, I get this long column vector that displays all the times where my function was evaluated. And then same thing with, with v. Okay. Cool. Okay. And so this velocity all right, corresponds to the you know corresponding element of time. Um, and so what I mean by that is um, let's see, the you know tenth element of our time vector is 2.5093 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds. Alright, so v of 10 would correspond to the velocity at that time. Okay, cool. All right, and if I have uh, vectors like that, I can plot them. Um, so I could plot t comma v, and and say I want to plot those as as black circles. Right, and let me do a hold on because we'll plot our analytical answer. Okay, so I'm going to hold on. Right. And so if I output the variable in this way, then I just need to plot. Uh, my data myself, uh, which really isn't much of a problem, right? And so typically when I solve, um, I'll store the variables and then plot. That way I have the data itself um, as well, right? Cool. Okay, so circles are where my function was evaluated, um, and we could add labels. So here my y label would be uh, velocity, uh, let's say meters per second. 
Oop. My X label is time in seconds. Okay. And I've got a graph that's looking pretty pretty awesome. Okay, cool. Okay. This is also a case where we're given an analytic expression, um, sort of an analytic solution. Um, so let's also go ahead and let's plot the analytic solution uh, for comparison. Okay. Oh, uh, and one more note before I forget is if I look at my rate function, okay, our rate function is g minus k times v. So within my function signature here, you'll see the t is underlined. The reason t is underlined is I have this input variable t that's not used anywhere in my function. Okay, so it's just MATLAB giving you a gentle reminder that you're passing this variable to this function but not actually using it. Are you sure this is what you want to do? Okay. Uh, but remember, uh, you have to, right? This is something you have to do. ODE45 expects a function with two input variables, first one being t, second being your value of your function at that time t. So even if your rate isn't dependent on t, it needs to be there because ODE45 is going to try and pass two variables to that rate function. Uh, so now our analytic solution, okay? Um, let's just create a function file uh, for it. So let's just call this um, function res is equal to free fall uh, solution. And it's going to have a single input variable t. Ah. If I want to try and vectorize it, maybe I'll make it capital T. And so our analytic solution is res is equal to okay, uh, g divided by k. Okay, those are both scalars times one minus exponential of negative k times t. Okay, so this is a constant times a vector. Uh, that's fine. That's vectorized. Um, and that should be fine too, it just be a constant times uh, vector. Okay. Need to add my parameters again. So constants we had g is equal to 9.81, k is equal to 0 0.5, and with that, that should be correct. Okay. And so what I want to do is just plot this analytic solution on the same graph and check to make sure that they agree. Okay. And so the way I can plot it is I could use our friend um, fplot. Okay, so fplot on a plot free fall solution. Okay, um, we solved our diffy q over the range uh, zero to forty seconds. Okay, so we'll give it a range of zero to forty, and then uh, let's just plot it as a red line, so it's something that will show up nicely on our plot. So press return, okay, and I have a red line that passes perfectly through those points. All right, so our numerical answer appears to agree essentially perfectly with um, our analytic solution. Okay, excellent, cool. Okay, um, so the last thing I'm going to look at is you know passing some additional parameters with an anonymous function because that may also be something that that you'll want to do. So I'm going to take this error function or um, rate function, and I'm going to save it as free fall rate. And maybe I'll just call it general. Okay, and then this general rate function. Okay, let me go ahead and close. Well, I could leave it open. I keep plotting on it. Uh, free fall general, t comma v, and now I also want to add g and k as input variables. In case for some reason you want to mess around with uh, gravitational constant and that constant k, all right? It's just an example. Okay, so that's saved. All right, so ODE45, I can't use this rate function with it because ODE45 expects a rate function with a single output and two inputs. Where now I have four inputs, all right? I have g and k, these additional input variables. ODE45. Um, it, it's not going to like it, right? Because each iteration that it's trying to numerically solve your differential equation, it's just going to call your rate function with two input variables. So the way around that is to create an anonymous function. OK, 
Okay, so um, let's maybe create in our command window. So we'll assign to G 9.81, we'll assign to K 0 0.5. Okay, and let's create an anonymous function, free fall um, A, uh, maybe for anonymous. So it's going to be of type function handle, and I have two input variables, T and V. Okay, and uh, what we want this anonymous function to do is call free fall rate general, okay, with the values of T and V that are passed to the anonymous function, along with G and K, which are currently defined in our command window. Okay, cool. So now I can call ODE45. And let's store these to a different set of vectors that we'll then plot on the same graph to make sure they all line up perfectly. So it'll be ODE45. Okay, so now when I have an anonymous function, it's already of type function handle, so I don't need to add the at sign. Okay, we'll integrate from 0 to 40 and the same initial condition. Okay, cool. And so now I'm going to plot. Um, TA versus VA, and um, I don't know, let's see if we can do green X's, okay? And hopefully our green X's appear directly on top of those black circles. Uh, and voila, they do, right? It's a perfect match, right? Um, so if you want to make those parameters inputs, uh, you can. Um, you're just going to need to use an anonymous function or another technique to get that additional information to your rate function. Your rate function as ODE45 is concerned can only have a single output and two input variables where the first input corresponds to T, second input corresponds to the value of your function at that T. Okay, and with that, let's move on to the next example problem.